is the story of the airship, a craft called on for many defense tasks. It's a story of scientific achievement of human courage, of setback and success. It's also an unfinished story, for the future of the airship is limited only by the ingenuity of man. The Goodyear Air Dock at Akron, Ohio, is the world's largest. The Navy airships Akron and Macon were constructed. Great ships which demonstrated the possibility of oceanic reconnaissance on a scale not previously known. They were used as flying airplane carriers of great speed and wide range. Even in there, the Akron and Macon brought lessons which will make future airships still safer and stronger. The free balloon has been known since 1783, and in 1901, Santos Dumont, a resident of Ply in any direction. It was directable or dirigible. The following year, Laborte left the ground in the first semi-rigid balloon. The French government acquired an airship. The idea of practical flight, until this time a fantastic notion entertained only by drinks and fools, suddenly captured the imagination of the world. Thousands turned out to watch these crude ships and their rose high above the city streets. The building of airships became an international race with every nation trying to outdo the other. Stimulated by this competition, airship design made rapid strides in every country. Germany took the lead in the early 1900s when Count Zeppelin developed the first rigid airship. Up until the First World War, his ships had transported 34,000 persons without a single accident. Truly a remarkable record for the mode of transportation that was still in the pioneering stage. They were building airships, flying them whenever and wherever they could find crowds to watch. And they found crowds everywhere, for everyone in America, too, was keenly interested in this spectacular development. In 1907, helium, a non-inflammable gas, was discovered. Late in the World War, when scientists learned how to separate it from natural gas, it was put into service in airships. The C-7 was the first blimp to utilize helium as the lifting gas, replacing inflammable hydrogen as the lighter-than-air medium. The safety of helium had an important bearing on the subsequent history of the airship. In 1925, the first of the ships in the Goodyear Air Fleet was christened in Akron. Since that time, the Goodyear blimps have become familiar visitors to nearly every city in the United States. They've traveled thousands of miles, performing errands that demonstrate the amazing versatility of the lighter-than-air ship. Landing on the deck of an ocean liner to pick up a passenger is a difficult task for any craft, but the Mayflower had no difficulty in performing it. Assisted by the ship's crew, the Mayflower made the landing and takeoff without a mishap. The passenger is Mr. P.W. Litchfield, who is greatly responsible for the development of the airship in America. The flight was made without a hitch, and in a few minutes the distinguished passenger was landed safely at the airport. If you like water sports, try this sometime. All you need is a surfboard, a blimp, a cable, and of course a bathing suit. Very easy to do, you simply hook one end of the cable to the blimp, the other to the board. Then, just stand there and carry on a telephone conversation with the pilot of the ship. Nothing to it, really. When things get dull, there are many interesting variations. The most important thing to remember, however, is to keep your head above water, which is difficult enough even when your feet are on solid ground. So far, everything's going along nicely, but we seem to be heading for trouble. It looks like a tough spot, but a little cooperation between the rider and the blimp pilot solves everything, but not for long. The episode ends as you always knew it would, with the outcome hanging for a while in the balance, but finally, our hero is all washed up. Here, a blimp shortcuts the line of communication between ship and shore. Dispatches are placed in watertight bags and lowered from the blimp to the ship. Having received instructions by a megaphone from above, the ship's crew hops into action. Messages are transferred, and after the bag is carefully sealed, it's again tossed overboard. Lines cleared, the airship pulls away and heads for shore. The ability of the airship to establish contact at sea with a surface ship can be used to supply the Navy's new patrol airships with gasoline or supplies, or to transfer men or equipment. The peacetime application of this maneuver holds promise for many new uses for the airships. More than once, the airship's ability to fly low and as slowly as it pleased has saved human life. This demonstration of the versatility of the airship took place along the Potomac River in the shadow of the capital. Canoeists who had upset their boat were rescued from above by one of the ships of the Goodyear fleet. The blimp flew low over the river and released life preservers. The forward motion of the ship carried them to within easy reach of the swimmers. With the canoeists clinging to the life preservers, the airship moved forward again. 
With air speed reduced to a minimum, the men are dragged safely to shore. It's a novel assignment, but the Goodyear airship does very well in the role of lifeguard. The Goodyear ships have figured in many such emergency duties in the past years, but none was more serious or brought to a more successful conclusion than the rescue of two flyers who were forced down in the treacherous Florida Everglades. The flyers were en route to the air races in Miami. When their plane failed to arrive on schedule, searching parties were sent out. The crippled plane was first sighted by airplane, but because of the swampy nature of the terrain, landings were impossible and rescue parties would not reach the men for days. Two Goodyear blimps participating in the air races were promptly dispatched to the scene, picking up a cameraman to film the rescue as it was made. Having located the distressed flyers, one blimp prepared to make a landing without the assistance of a ground crew. Considering the difficulty of the terrain and the treacherous crosswinds, that part of it wasn't quite as simple as it may sound. But skillful piloting did the job, and the flyers made their way through the undergrowth to the cabin of the airship. The Everglades rescue was only an incident in the history of flight, but it provided conclusive proof that the small airship can be utilized in thousands of ways to augment and supplement the airplane as an instrument of transportation and commerce. The day is not far distant when these picturesque little craft will be familiar messengers of the skies. In the world of today, the airship has many important military uses. To demonstrate a few of the most common of these wartime applications of the airship, let's join the Navy for a flight with a modern parachute unit. It's part of a training routine, but that doesn't mean it's going to be dull. Far from it. We're going to get a thrill or two before it's over. Our ship is the Goodyear-built K-2, an ideal craft for just such a job as this. There aren't enough seats to go around, but there's always a way to squeeze in a few extra passengers, even if they have to sit on the floor. In a few minutes, we're at the desired altitude, and the Navy stalwarts step off into space. As soon as they clear the ship, they yank their ripcords, and their parachutes blossom out like morning glories in the sun. They go drifting through the air like lazy birds under the watchful eyes of the officer in charge. Now, if you want a thrill, watch this. The chutist is over and plummeting to earth. But where's the chute? He's fallen thousands of feet now, and that chute doesn't open. But it does, just in time, too. That was too close for comfort. Next time, let us know when you're going to do that, will you, buddy? Here's the Navy's K-3, first of the modern fleet of some 48 projected airships designed for patrol and observation work. The K-ships are about three times the size of the Goodyear blimp. They're inflated with 416,000 cubic feet of helium gas. The two 400 horsepower whirlwind engines give the ship a top speed of 80 miles an hour and a cruising range of 2,000 miles. The K-ships provide sleeping quarters and galley for a crew of 10. Armament consists of machine guns and depth bombs to be used when the ship locates enemy submarines. The K-ships have a special usefulness in coastal patrol, where again, their ability to cruise as slowly as desired make them ideal for U-boat hunting. Their design is the result of years of experimentation, and their successful performance will exert a tremendous influence in lighter-than-air travel in the years to come. Supplementing the K fleet are the smaller L ships, now being used by the Navy for training airship personnel. The L-3 is here leaving her dock at Wingfoot Lake in Akron. She'll be put through her test flights by Goodyear technicians before joining the Navy. The L-3 will soon be nosing her way through the clouds, off on a career of adventure and service, a flying school for the Navy's aerial cadets. She's a trim ship, well-designed and well-built. The L-3 and her sister ships are a tribute to the men who make the airships and the crews who keep them flying. To all of them, we extend our hopes for many, many happy landings. Thank you.